Hey everyone, how's it going? It's James here from Car Radio etc. Um, just showing you guys everything that I've done to my bike. Editing this halfway through my last uh, video's ride. God damn, it's beautiful up here. So today all I want to do is talk about my Ninja 300 that I've got here behind me. Everything that I've done to it. I've done quite a few modifications, most of it aesthetic. Yeah. So yeah, let's just jump right into it. So this here is my 2014 Ninja 300. Kawasaki uh, EX300 or Ninja 300, whatever you want to call it. This is what it looks like now. Let me just show you what it looks like when I first got it. So it's full black, jet black, same as the gas tank. Um, and I've done quite a fair amount of, dis of stuff to it. When I first got it, the only thing that had been done was these mirrors had been added on. These circular, I guess you could call them... Um, blind spot mirrors that's literally the only thing I've been changed about it but me being me coming from a professional career in car audio and custom modification I had to do something didn't I right so let's kind of just what would be the best way to talk about this let's talk about the color first to get that out of the way because otherwise you're just gonna be wondering about that the whole time since it is quite standout ish so the color it used to be white I mean sorry it used to be jet, uh, just straight jet black I really liked the black I thought it was really cool it was you know stealth it was almost like a sleeper model it was quite badass it reminded me of the Batmobile you know it looked really good but the only problem with black is it's not it doesn't stand out or catch the eye and while my main mission in life isn't just to be seen by everyone I'm, I don't have that kind of complex motorbikers aren't seen on the road they are they are hit constantly t-boned by cars because cars have apparently the attention span of a teaspoon and don't notice motorbikers on the road I get it we're a smaller profile but the whole point of this color this color scheme is so that people see me whether, whether they like it or not I don't care if they think god that's ugly that's garish that's too much that's fine you've seen me now you're not gonna hit me so that's the reason I went for this color I'm not gonna that's I mean I'm not saying I don't like the color but that's the reason I did this so what's with this stuff around here so the Ninja 300s, they come in a white version, which I really like. I think it's my favorite stock color for the Ninja 300. And I thought about just wrapping, uh, just doing everything white. But then I thought, well, what's the point of me putting a whole bunch of work in to make it not unique? You know, just make it, but just make it really stock looking. Like you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between my one, which I'd put lots of time and effort into, and a stock white one. So I thought, well, let's let's keep with the white, but do something different. So this white here, I might actually be able to show you a bit better from the other angle where the sun is on it. Now this white is actually like a metallic ice white. Let's see if I can, I don't know if you can really see the reflection, you can kind of see the reflection in it a wee bit. So that's metallic ice white. This stuff all around here and on the front of the headlight, this is black and white sticker bomb. So, I do, yeah, so in case you haven't figured it out already, it's a vinyl wrap. I did it all myself and considering I have never wrapped anything in vinyl before in my life I'm actually really happy with how it turned out it's not perfect I'm not gonna lie and say that it's a perfect job there are wrinkles here and there there are sections where I had to make cuts and you know uh, you know it, it's not perfect I'm admitting that right now it's not like a professional job but for my first attempt at wrapping something in vinyl I think I did a pretty good job I had a design in my head you know I managed to wrap these in these bits here all the way in carbon fiber glossy 4d carbon fiber stuff and then this in ice white the carbon fiber kind of transitions as accent points around the bike so this piece was already on it that's the other thing that had already been done to it a little carbon fiber sticker there the good old eBay $30 carbon fiber rear seat delete say what you want about them it does the job I think it does look a bit better than the uh, the factory seat only thing I don't like about that is that if I do decide I want to put uh, the girlfriend on the back or something like that the tongue that is bolted to here in the back that this is, uh, is held on by prevents you from being able to put the rear seat back on unless you unbolt it and take it out that's my one peeve with this but I mean I'm only on my learners by the way which you can see hiding away down in there I'm only on my learners so people going in the back seat it never happens 
And the reason I'm on, only on my learners is because I've been riding bikes for like years now. There's no difference between having a learners and having a restricted in New Zealand, except for that yellow piece of plastic. And to me, it's not that bad, big, uh, big of a deal having a yellow piece of plastic down there. But anyway, so yeah, I wrapped all of this in vinyl. That's kind of the main thing that I've done that you can see anyway. Yeah, I thought I've, this is probably one of the only stock pieces left. It's the standard black gloss. I thought about doing this in carbon fiber. Oh, and this piece. Maybe I'll do these later down the track. I'll put like some carbon fiber on one of them, maybe. The windshield I've replaced with this quite cool green one. So the color scheme I originally started out with going was I was keeping everything black and I was adding little green accents here and there. Uh, I have changed most, uh, almost all pieces that I can on here of, an, of metal to anodized green. So you'll notice I've done the, uh, the bolts kit, like all the bolts on this bike, grips, bar ends, uh, brake and clutch, all the bolts, the ch chain tensioners are green, the oil lid is green. Obviously I said the brush, uh, sorry, the, not the brush, the clutch and brake. Uh, I've put one of those things on the kickstand, a whole lot of green. The only, I have got another piece of green at home to replace this, but I don't recommend you guys buy that if you're thinking about looking at buying all these little bits of anodized color from eBay. The replacement for this, though it does fit and the screws line up right, They've got the thickness of it wrong and it actually causes brake fluid to leak out and you can see down in there, brake fluid eats paint pretty quick. So I put that back to stock. Put these on, the good old eBay uh, thigh grips, I guess you could call them. So you'll notice, yeah, like it, we've got a pretty consistent theme going on here. It's a stock black bike. I started by adding heaps of green to it, it looked really cool. Just little accents of green here and there and then I started adding the white. And what I like about this is if I decide I'm sick of the white, it, it, I'm sick of people seeing it or it peels off and it turns to shit and I, and, and I don't like it anymore, I can peel all that off, it'll be black and then I've still got some cool, you know, green accents all over it, like the anodized metal and the windscreen. You notice I put some of these stickers on the tires, from, those are from eBay as well by the way. I actually really like those, they're actually really good quality, it's not just thin sticker it's actually quite thick gummy uh, not gummy but it's quite thick you know rubbery plastic stickers that go on they were really good quality i was very impressed with those one of the first things that i did was this hot bodies mgp exhaust the growler as it's called i really like it i'll give you a quick demo of it hold on i'm just gonna have to switch the mic around It's cool, it's loud, it makes the 300 sound like a 600. That may be ambitious to say, I can imagine the 600 riding people in the, in the, in the group or on YouTube thinking, no it doesn't, you know nothing what you're talking about. I think it sounds really good. It's, it was cheap, it wasn't expensive compared to some of the other exhausts for these 300s out there, like the Aprovac range and a whole bunch of others. Um, this one wasn't too expensive and I think it sounds really, really good. Some people told me I might not get uh, compliance or whatever you call it, uh, certification or anything with an exhaust that loud. I have been tailed by lots of cops and it hasn't been a problem, okay? So cops have not cared about this exhaust. The other thing, other main thing I did was the tail tidy. I got rid of the great big poof sticking out the back of it because let's face it, that's probably the most ugly part of the bike. And now I've got my number plate mounted up in here on, see if I can get that bracket to show up in the light. So that's just an eBay cheapo bracket thing, just bolted back there, this does swivel if I want to adjust it, um, or if I get told it's not on the right angle. I kept the reflectors because you know what, as I said at the beginning of the video, uh, for me, being seen is important. And so I decided, you know, I'm not totally baller, I will keep the reflectors, same as I've kept the reflectors on the front. I know a lot of people say, take the reflectors off your front forks, they look horrible. Hey, if it catches someone's eye and it means they don't run me over, I'd rather keep them. So I have got that. I have got a light up here which shines on the number plate and lights it up really well. Uh, maybe I'll come back later uh, tonight and show you guys what it is like in the dark so you can know that it is very easy to see. So yes, I have got a light there which shines on that. It's completely legal, works all good. I've also got a camera here and I've got a camera here and they link to this. Another eBay special. So this is a DVR as well as a front and rear dash cam uh, for motorbikes. This is designed for a motorbike so if I just turn it on here. 
gonna have to stop the music playing in a second and I'll cover that in a minute. So now you can see we've got both the front and rear cameras there and normally I have it on rear camera only so I just switch the mode to, there's the front and there's the rear camera. See if I put my hand behind the bike, there we go. So I can see what's happening right behind me. So yeah, it's, it's really handy for knowing what's behind you because maybe that is one of my other pet peeves with this bike. The side mirrors, they're, they're for the most part pretty good, but they just aren't quite wide enough out to show you what is directly behind you, like the car directly behind you. And I mean, of course, I'm not saying I want wider wing mirrors. I still like to be able to lane split and fit between people. So I think it's good, but I just like having the camera because I can see exactly what's happening behind me. And also, I like the fact that this is a DVR, so it's actually recording what's going on in front and behind me. So if someone rear ends me, or I see some, or I see a crash in front of me or something like that, or someone pulls out, it's recorded, I can, you know, if things turn to crap and go to court, then I can use that as evidence. So yeah, that's, uh, I mean, what a, oh look, there's another piece of green there, I forgot to say, did the brake fluid cap there in green. One of my friends did warn me about this and said he had a friend who did one of these off eBay and that it shot out from the pressure. I, I've ridden this thing pretty hot and it, uh, it hasn't been a problem. So that's fine. The good old spools, everyone does them. So now the other thing I've done is I've actually installed a Parrot kit for some music. So what I've got going on here is Parrot controller. Now this is wireless, so it's actually just stuck on there at the moment. It's 3M adhesive to the bar. It's been in the rain, it's been in the sun, it hasn't fallen off yet. So I'm pretty confident with it. This is the screen, which is, is it my glasses or is it the camera? Is it showing up? Ha, that's so funny. I've got polarized glasses on, right? And on the camera screen, it, it doesn't come up with the funny colors, but if I put my glasses on and look at the camera screen, it comes up with funny colors all over it. Polarized sunglasses are weird. So, yeah, this I can turn it on. That little deling was from the eBay DVR, so just ignore that, you can't do much about eBay and their crappy sounds. Here we go, Parrot, so this is an MKI 9100 by the way. I haven't got anything connected for Bluetooth, because I'd what I've actually got for music is I've got a memory stick, oop, stay focused, I've got a memory stick plugged in in the back of the bike in the USB port, and I just browse and play music, whatever I feel like, you know, I've got, so if I go USB, we could go down here, play some Leonard Skinner, Freebird. And it goes pretty loud. So the speakers I've got going on for that, are hidden kind of right behind here. I've got some photos that I'll try and dig up and uh, post on on top of the video so you guys can see, but they're, uh, they're Eclipse kind of ball pod speakers. I, th I don't actually know what they were originally designed for, they were a leftover from me working the auto sound security that I inherited. And yeah, I managed to pro like actually bolt them in place, so they're not gonna fall out, they're not zip tied or anything, they're bolted in behind here and it's cool because they're pod speakers so they're completely enclosed that way I'm not worried about the elements eventually getting to them and corroding them um, and they kind of point back this way inside these fairings and I mean it's not pointing right at me the sound just bounces around and gets out and to tell you and everyone's gonna ask can you hear it while you're riding especially with that exhaust yes yes I can at probably 80% volume I can hear it you know quite clearly and enjoy it and I can rock along. And then when I get to the lights and the revs come down, I can hear it really clearly. So it does work, it does suit, uh, it does fit its purpose and it's good fun, I like it. So I have put LED lights all over this, you know, your, your good old typical Ninja 300, it's gotta have some colorful LED strips all through it. I will try and point them out for you guys here in the daytime, but I'm also gonna come back later when it's darker and show you what it looks like at night, cause this really isn't gonna demonstrate it. But we've got an LED strip above the L plate there. There's another one on the back of this, that, that piece of plastic there, I don't know what it does, but it is actually, it's a part of the bike, and I put a piece of LED strip on the back of there. There is a L piece of LED strip on top of the headlight and it actually goes across, down, up and across and that lights up kind of the whole inside of the fairing. You can see it showing through there. There is also one on up above the front wheel. Can I see it from here? I don't think I can. Let's go around this side. Where is it? Uh, can, you, can you see that? 
Yeah, it's up there. Firing down at the front wheel. And the two main ones are on the inside of here and they go down all the way down there. In fact, you can see the one on that side there. And it goes all the way up. If you look down here, there it is. And then you can also see it kind of down inside there. And that's to make the light come out of all of these main fairings and light up the whole engine bay area. And I was very meticulous with doing it. I was trying to work out the best way to do it where heat from the engine wasn't gonna be a problem. And it's all, you know, silicon glued in place. It's not likely to fall out and uh, fall over the road and catch on things. So I think I've done a pretty good job. So the controller for it, these are RGB by the way, so you can change the color of them to whatever you like. I quite like having them on green at night because it matches the rest of the bike, or blue. Um, the controller is sort of in the brains of the Parrot kit is up and behind here. I'm just gonna turn this off so I don't, so I don't flatten my battery. That would suck, I'd have to, oh, well at least I'm up on a hill. If I have to, I can, uh, I can gravity, uh, what do you call it, hill start it. But let's just not flatten the battery. So the controller and the brains for the parrot are in behind the, uh, the headlight assembly, kind of, and there's a big cavity above the headlight behind this fairing here, and it's all mounted up in there, cable tied in place, not gonna go anywhere. And then I can change the color of it. So you see, just to see if the camera's gonna pick this up. Just, so it's hard for me to tell with my glasses on if I can, yeah, there we go, that little thing on the right there. That is a little infrared receiver, which I can point a remote control at. remote control, set whatever color I like. I can, I've, at the moment I've got it on color changing so it actually cycles through all of them. I can do whatever I want with it. And here by the way, that's the USB stick with all my music on it, four gigs worth of it. Sounds pretty good, I'm enjoying it. Just keep that in the boot where I can get it. This is the piece I'm talking about where you can't actually uh, put your factory rear seat back on once you've got one of these installed because it actually, as you can tell, covers up the hole that uh, well actually no, the hole has nothing to do with it, but this, these two square slots here are what your factory rear seat claw locks into, and then obviously the finger thing goes down in there and locks in. So if I want to put my rear seat back on, I basically just have to take these bolts off, take out this piece of metal, and then put the bolts back in. Yeah. And getting this back on isn't that hard, but it's not as easy as the factory seat, I'll say that much. I usually have to sort of look under here, but I don't take my... Oh, and also tip, if you've got one of these, or if you're planning on getting one, install the rubber bungs there, but don't put them there. I saw someone else on YouTube uh, say this, and man, it makes a world of difference. Don't put the rubber bungs in those sections there, because otherwise it's really, really hard to get it to close down. It pushes on that piece of metal, and you have to really give it some, uh, some weight to actually get it to go down. There we go, I, I did that, and then, ah, boom, I did it one-handed, boom. Because here we are at night, it's sort of just after dusk now. Just get my key, and I'll show you what it looks like now in the dark. I was going to film a little bit earlier, right at dusk, but I wasn't quite home in time, so now we're just a little bit after. So now I'll just turn this on. Oh, for one, let me just show you the, so you can see the gear indicator really comes up nicely at night. Yeah. And now, you can see how much underglow it actually has. Oh, and so here's the uh, number plate. Very, very visible. So yeah, there it is with some light on it, just using my phone as a torch. from up on top. Yeah. 
So yeah, that's it at night. Looks really good in my, in my opinion. I think it looks great. Okay, I think that is the, for the most part everything that I've done to this bike. Other things that I wanted to do or thought, have thought about doing is uh, I tried while I was doing all of the wiring for this to look for a good place to put a radar detector. I've got a Valentine 1 and I thought about doing a nice flush mount sort of installation. Oh, speaking of flush mounts, I've got this. Where's my key? I've showed this in another video. Is it gonna focus? It's kind of hard to see with the sun poking on it, but that there is my gear indicator. See if I just turn it off again. You can see it behind there. It looks way better. Uh, it's it looks a lot better in person than it does on camera I'll say uh, that about this one feature it's not coming up very clearly but basically that is one of those uh, you know good old I think it's IDEA gear indicators for these ninjas which plugs in to the factory diagnostics port in the back of the bike and then I flush mounted it with epoxy in the plastic here so I cut a hole flush mounted it and then this is just a piece of 25 millimeter black electrical tape stuck over the top of it and the brightness of it is actually bright enough that it shines through the electrical tape and it looks really good and flush I'll, uh, I'll insert a little clip here of what, of what it looks like kind of in a slightly darker environment other things I'm looking at to get for it uh, from the good old eBay I know they make some uh, some sprocket covers to go a couple of different model uh, sprocket covers with some green anodized aluminium involved in that I'm considering that uh, they make a, a front fairing uh, kind of underwing thing which sits under here and looks really cool it kind of gives it that ninja 400 look I'm thinking about getting um, one of those they're only a hundred odd bucks or something like that I'm just trying to make this thing look as mean as possible Oh, and eventually I do want to replace these headlights with some KT motorcycle ones. I'll insert a picture of those and you'll get an idea of the ones I want to do. Some people say, you know, do the ones with the halos. I personally, I like halo rings on cars, on some cars. I don't like them on the motorbikes as much. I think the, uh, I like the look of the KT motorcycle ones a lot better. So I'll probably look at doing that eventually. Oh, I've got a, um, something else that I keep forgetting that I've done this. I've got a radiator guard there from eBay. Not much money. Oh. And then I've also got two horns. So that's the factory horn there on the right. But you know, it sounds pretty pitiful. So I've installed a second one. Just, it works off the same thing. I'm pretty sure it's working. I'm just gonna check this because I actually don't know. I haven't had to use my horn that much. Yep, they're both working. That way, oh, there goes the music again. So that way, if someone cuts me off, I can let them know about it with my dual horns. Because if one is good, two must be better, right? I thought about smoking these with some, uh, you know, some, some clear smoke vinyl wrap but I think they look quite good just as the standard kind of crystal white kind of gives it the contrast against this black section here oh I kept I totally forgot where are the indicators this here is a uh, oh crap I've forgotten the brand <laughs> I'm totally blanking on the brand of this it's an integrated tail light so the brake light the tail light and the two indicators are in here and it's programmable one as well so obviously the brake works as standard the tail light works as standard well actually the brake light can be what you can have it do is you can have it work as standard where it just turns on when you pull the trigger or pull the brake or you can have it go to strobe mode where when you pull the brake it goes flash 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 on like kind of bait him and dun 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 I don't do it that way I use the brake as standard and then the indicators they can either be on off on off like your standard indicator or it can slide to the right and flash slide to the right and flash and that's the way I've done that one because I quite like how that looks it's like a loading bar so I'll just show you that real quick and you can customize those programs really it's just a push of a button to choose what setting you want and you can have it on full programmed mode or on full standard mode or a combination of the two pause the music before it starts so the tail light is on at the moment I'll see if I can pull the actually I'm going to use the foot brake with my foot so there's the brake I don't know if it's coming up very bright on the camera but I know that in person this brake light is actually brighter than the stock one it's LEDs and it's much much brighter because it's kind of more focused and directional if I put on the indicator to the right here's what we've got so that's the right hand indicator and then you can do this obviously this left is the same and then if you have the indicator on and also put your foot on the brake You can still see that it's indicating 
hopefully this is showing up on camera quite well I realize it's actually a bit of an awkward lighting to be shooting in at the moment even though it's beautiful and warm out here it is quite a low sun which always results in more glare in cameras and harder to film in and that guys so far is my bike that's that, that's everything I've done to it so far obviously wrapped it in vinyl put the stickers on the wheels changed as many pieces I uh, changed as many bolts and bits of metal as I can to green anodized aluminium. Rear seat delete, indicators and brake light, f uh, what do you call it, a tail tidy removal. Touch the number plate up inside it with the L plate below it up there. Light, cameras at the front and rear, LED glow lights, I guess you would call them inside all of it. A sound system with a para MKI 9100, MGP hot, uh, hot bodies MGP growler exhaust, that's probably one of my, my most favourite mod. I mean that one you get to experience every time you ride it. The tail tidy is more, it just, you know, it looks better from when, when it's parked on the road and it's, you know, when people see it from a third party perspective it looks best. And then obviously, yeah, the colours. And... So that guys, that's my bike. I think that's going to be the end of this video. So thank you guys for watching this video, for tuning in and listening to me talk about my thing for 30 minutes or whatever it is that I've been filming for. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, if you think it's cool, leave a like or leave a comment. Let me know if you've got any suggestions for things I can do in the future. Or if you think it's horrible, tell me. I'm not going to get hurt feelings, but I don't care. Thanks for watching today's video, guys. Choose to be happy, and I'll catch you in the next video, which will hopefully be soon. Kakitiano.